Hey, welcome back. It's Nolan Mathias from Market Street 60, and today is your May real estate update. Yes, it's coming to you a little bit later than normal, about a week later than normal. And the reason why is because Saskatchewan has yet to publish their April sales data. And I'm thinking there's a reason for that. I think it's because of the absolute insanity in the market and the fact that the numbers are really skewed because April last year was obviously a lockdown month and the year over year numbers look absolutely crazy, which you'll see in a second. But before we get into it and we talk about all the details, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers, where one lucky subscriber is going to win $5,000 to put towards their TFSA, their RSP, their RESP, or even their mortgage if they like. So go ahead, click that subscribe button. It's free, it's easy, and it's definitely worth it. The definitive guide on how to manage your credit, product, and elite price in that order. It's never been more important to get your mortgage right. Okay, so let's get into it. The coffee's extra steamy today and we are ready to go, except for those Saskatchewan numbers. So I just wanna make a caveat to this whole thing. Um, I think all of the provinces, all the real estate boards across the country had a little bit of trouble determining how to publish their numbers for April of 2021. The reason why is because the April 2020 numbers were so skewed down because of the lockdowns early on in the pandemic that it was virtually impossible to basically compare April of 2021 to April of 2020 and different boards did different things. Some of the boards looked at the numbers versus the five year average for April. Some of them compared the numbers more to March of 2021. Everybody kind of had their own take on how to deal with this. Uh, I'm guessing that at some point Saskatchewan will release some sort of a press release or maybe they'll just skip it for a couple months. I don't know. But the reason why Saskatchewan doesn't have any data and the reason why we're late getting to this is primarily because they just haven't published it yet. If I did miss that, please do me that favor and link in the description below and we'll get that information updated. But for now, let's get into the real estate update for May and talk about what's going on across the country. We're going to start with Vancouver and work our way to the east. One thing that I've noticed uh, pretty much across the board here with the exception of Calgary is that markets seem to be cooling down a little bit. Now, it's been said that a lot of that is to do with the market in, uh, in Ontario being locked down. I'm not sure that's exactly what's happening. I think we've probably more lost or ran out of buyers in that market than we have than it is anything to do with the uh, with the actual additional lockdowns. Obviously, the lockdowns are going to have a little bit of effect, but we're seeing in other markets as well, like Vancouver, where there isn't the same sort of uh, stay at home orders, the activity slowing down as well. So. I think some of the craziness has filtered its way out of the market. In Calgary, we're seeing a little bit of a different trend. We're starting to see Calgary's market catch up to the rest of the country, but it is definitely um, it's definitely an interesting conversation about what's going to happen going into May, June, July. I've been saying for quite a while that in different markets, uh, it, it is absolutely crazy. And the one thing about a crazy market where you're in competing offers all the time is if you just wait a few months, you'll eventually have the ability to purchase a property in a more normal market, especially when you get into fall and winter time. So let's take a look at Vancouver's numbers. Um, interesting things to note here, benchmark price is up by 12% over 2020, April of 2020. The HPI benchmark is now at $1.52 million, which is up slightly from last month. Interesting thing here though, is active listings are up about 9.1%. And here's the number, and you're gonna see this kind of across the board. Sales are up 342% over the previous year. And the reason why is quite simply because when everything happened in March of 2020, and we were pretty much locked down as a country for April and May of 2020, uh, of 2020 basically what happened was sales ground to a halt, and that's what you're seeing reflected in these numbers. Now, what's interesting to note is that for April, there was a 15% decrease in sales compared to March of 2021. So the previous mar month, March, which is typically not as big of a month as April, actually had more sales, which is an indication that the market is actually starting to slow down a little bit. And I kind of have this feeling that people are gonna wanna start taking their time, enjoy their summer when they start to get access to their summer. Uh, obviously, Alberta and Ontario, that's not the easiest thing to do right now, but I have a feeling we're gonna see some cooling off in June, July, and August as people decide that they wanna actually take uh, advantage of their summer months and maybe not go through the crazy real estate market things that they've been going through for the last eight to nine months. Now, moving along and moving into Calgary, 
Uh, of course, Calgary and Edmonton's markets run very similar to each other. So we cover the bigger market of the two, which is Calgary and also the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, but similar things happening in Edmonton. Benchmark price is up 9.2% over last year. We're now at a benchmark price of 451400 Of course, benchmark price being a specific type of home um, that is comparable basically across time and across different areas of the city. Uh, benchmark price, 451 Active listings are up 7.5% over last year. You would expect that because there was probably less listings last year. And sales, obviously, again, up 462% because there was not a ton of sales back back in April of last year. Um, now, one thing to note, 3,209 sales in April of 2021. That is a record for April in Calgary. So we are trending towards one of the fastest growing markets that we've ever seen in, in this city. Uh, with respect to Saskatchewan, we have no data this month. Uh, we don't have any commentary. We don't have any uh, press releases. I could probably dig deep and find some data for you, but uh, you know what, we're just gonna leave Saskatchewan unmentioned this month because they didn't put out their press release. Moving on to Winnipeg, uh, sales are up 53% over the five-year average. So I like the way Winter, 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 I almost called it Winnipeg, Winnipeg. I like the way that Winnipeg approached this instead of showing the numbers versus last year, they showed the numbers versus the five-year average and sales are up five. 53% over the five year average. So they're selling 53% more homes in April of this year than they typically do in an April over the last five years. Obviously their active listings are down pretty substantially again, 41%, and their average detached price is now up to 382,000. Uh, this by the way, for Winnipeg is the first month that April sales have topped 2000 sales in a single month, which is Again, on trend with what's going on across the country, having big Aprils and record Aprils pretty much across the board. Toronto GTA, uh, our biggest market obviously that we cover, benchmark price is up 17.8% over April of 2020. Sales are up 394%. Again, that's that big increase because there wasn't a lot of sales last year during the pandemic. And the benchmark price we thought in April, it was going to tip over 1.1 million. It actually retracted from 1,097,000 to 1,090,000. So that benchmark price has actually come down slightly, which I find interesting. Uh, and again, another new sales record for April, 13,663 sales in the GTA market, which is insane. Uh, moving on to Ottawa, which is the newest city that we've added. It was obviously included in April's real estate update. It's now included in May's. Their benchmark price is up 42.3% over last year. This has a lot to, lot to do with tech and health uh, moving into the city and growing in the city along with obviously preference changes. Sales are up 164%. Not as big of a sales increase as a lot of the other markets. I don't know if this is because there is less sales happening in Ottawa or if April was really just not as locked down in Ottawa last year with respect to sales as it was everywhere else across the country, but obviously um, less of a significant number of sales increase, but a really significant increase in the benchmark price, which is huge. It is now $743,204. Moving on to Montreal, uh, Quebec, which is the most Eastern city that we're covering right now. And you can see that their median price is up 39%. Sales doubled in April of 2021 versus April of 2020. And active listings are down in this market as well. So you're probably gonna see some continued price growth in Montreal going into May and June. Median price is $500,000 now, and their sales are up 6% compared to 2019. Montreal taking the approach of instead of comparing to 2020, they compared it to 2019 which is a little bit different than Winnipeg's approach where they looked at a five-year average. So different markets, different economists, different real estate boards taking different approaches to their commentary on the data. I think the commentary across the board is, is fairly similar and that is that April sales were up significantly compared to last year. They're both up from the perspective of an, an long-term average and they're up significantly obviously because of the lockdown last year but what the one thing is true that is true across all of the markets is that the number of sales is up significantly and april was a record-setting month pretty much across the board 
with respect to number of sales that are happening. So this, this I want to buy a house and I want to buy it now. And a lot of people looking to buy houses and preferences changing. This isn't a market spe specific thing across ca uh, Canada. It's happening everywhere and it is definitely the trend. So, you know, in the comments below, leave me what you think is happening in your market, how you're feeling, what you're seeing with respect to uh, competing offers and those sorts of things. I'm curious to hear what's going on in different markets from people who are actually on the ground. And if you would like to have your city featured in the uh, June real estate update, go ahead and leave your city in the comment section below and whichever one is voted up most, we'll do our best to get into the real estate update. Uh, if you are a first time home buyer, we have our first time home buyer camp that you can sign up for right now. I'll put a link in the description below. It is priced super economically so that you can get maximum value out of it. We've also got our secrets to getting the lowest interest rate course that is on right now. There's going to be a 50% coupon code off the already discounted price. That course, by the way, is the number one selling course that I have. It talks about things like how to negotiate with a broker, how to negotiate with a bank, uh, what you can negotiate into your mortgage and what you can't, and specifically how much margins available to negotiate. And that single chapter alone will get you 10 to 50 times your money back on the price of the course. Again, another course that we've priced so economically that it is very hard not to get your money back. So again, coupon code in the description below along with the link. I ho sincerely hope you'll join us on those courses. And if you don't, that's okay. I hope we'll see you on the very next June real estate update. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.